I want us to briefly look at a mother who was intentional about influencing her son. Look at 2 Timothy, if you will. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I want you to look at verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5. Paul writes, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, and thee is a reference to Timothy, right? The letter is being written to Timothy. The apostle Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. And he writes these inspired words by the Holy Spirit. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Now let me give you a little background on Timothy, on his mother Eunice, and also on his grandmother Lois. They lived in a city called Lystra, which was located in Asia Minor. Timothy had a very interesting home life because his mother was a Jew, but his father was a Greek. As a matter of fact, if you look, keep your finger here and go back to Acts chapter 16, if you will. Look at Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. Because the implication here in this verse is that his father was an unbeliever who never trusted Christ as his Savior. Look at Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. Then came he, that is the apostle Paul, to Derbe and Lystra. That's where they lived. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, or Timothy, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess and believed. Now notice that. His mother was a believer. Eunice was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. But then you have a semicolon, and then you have the word but. But his father was a Greek. So the implication here is that Timothy's mother was a Jew, and she was a believer in Jesus Christ. But Timothy's father was a Greek, and seemed to be an unbeliever, one who had never put his faith, his trust in Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. It's quite possible that on uh, Paul's first missionary journey that he was instrumental in leading Eunice and Lois to Christ. They had been devout Jews who were patiently awaiting the arrival of the promised Messiah. But after meeting Paul and after hearing the gospel, they not only recognized Jesus as the promised Messiah, but they also received him as their Lord and as their Savior. So Eunice got saved and Lois got saved. Some commentators speculate that while Timothy was a young boy, it's possible that his father may have died. And that's why his grandmother came to live with him and his mother. If that is true, we're not sure if it's true or not, but if it is true, it must have been very challenging for Eunice as a mother to raise her son in such extreme conditions. More than likely, she had to find a job in order to financially provide for herself and now also for her mother, Lois, and also for her son, Timothy. It's quite possible that she had to spend a, a lot of hours away from home at work, and that's why Timothy's grandmother had such a spiritual influence on his life as well. If you are a grandmother here today, please don't underestimate the influence that you have on your grandchildren. Here's proof right here in the Bible. Not only is this an example of a great spiritual mother named Eunice, but it is also a great example of a spiritual grandmother named Lois. And whenever Lois had the opportunity to spend time with her grandson, Timothy, she was morally and spiritually impacting that young man. That's important for you as a grandmother or even as a grandfather to be involved in the lives of your grandchildren. 
it's quite possible that the two of them struggled to try to make sure that Timothy understood what was right and understood what was wrong. They spent many hours making sure that that young boy understood what God expected from him, from his word. And Paul certainly implies in this text that both women, both Lois and Eunice, had a spiritual impact on young Timothy. But not only would it have been financially difficult on Eunice, being a single mother, if her husband had passed away, but it would have been spiritually difficult because Lystra, you need to understand that the city of Lystra had a very, very ungodly heathen culture. There must not have been very many Jewish people that were living in Lystra because we don't read about a synagogue being there. So here's what you need to understand about Timothy. He grew up in a monotheistic home that existed in a polytheistic culture. You say, now, wow, you used some big words there. Let me explain. He grew up in a home that believed that there was only one true living God. But every time he went out the doors of his home, he was surrounded in a culture that believed in the multiplicity of gods. In a culture that denied that there was one God and they said, oh, there's many gods. You just choose which God you want to serve and which God you want to worship. Here's my point. It's never been easy for mothers to raise godly children in an ungodly culture. My hat is off to the mothers here today that are intentional about their motherhood. I thank you for realizing the important task that God has given you to, to raise a godly son or a godly daughter in a culture that cares nothing at all about God or his word. You see, Eunice was determined to do just that. It was her love for God, her love for her son Timothy that caused her to be an intentional mother. Deep down in her heart and in her soul, she believed that God had a special plan and a special purpose for her son's life. And so she was committing herself to be actively involved in his moral and spiritual development. 